As a prospective MP, what is the legacy you would like to see left for the next generation and those beyond? Oh, New Zealand has to be uh, a place that is economically prosperous, where there are interesting uh, jobs, fulfilling careers, a place where people can afford to have part of the Kiwi dream, to own a home and so on. Uh, those are the things that we want and of course from Generation Zero's point of view it's also important that one of the biggest advantages uh, New Zealand has is we've got the most incredible uh, environments, you might say one of the best pieces of real estate uh, on the planet and so uh, we want to be good uh, environmental custodians but we also uh, want to be a, a prosperous society. Thanks. What risks do you think climate change poses to the well-being of young people and future generations of New Zealanders? Well of course it's true that if you're young you're going to be around for a lot longer so you're going to experience um, you know, more of the effects of however our environment uh, evolves in the years to come. Um, now, you know, climate uh, is changing. People can debate uh, the extent of how much of that is, is man-made, but we know that at least, at the very least, a very small part of it uh, is man-made. Uh, and so th the question is, you know, how do we best uh, deal with it? And I think beneath that question is, do we want to have large government-led uh, schemes uh, or do we want to actually uh, make sure that everybody uh, has as much uh, prosperity uh, and choice about how we develop technology, how we develop uh, our markets, uh, and uh, how we go about our business to deal with the challenges we face? Yeah. And now for the policy questions. Sure. Do you think that the action New Zealand's government is currently taking on climate change is sufficient and does justice to our future generations? If not, what goals and actions would you push for in the next term if elected? Well, you can argue whether it's sufficient. I think the question is whether it's smart. Uh, what we currently have is what was going to be the only all sectors, all gases uh, emissions trading scheme uh, in the world, uh, where a country that produces 0.2 per cent uh, of world emissions. Uh, so that is going to have no effect uh, on the future of the climate or such a small effect that we can call it negligible. Now some people would say, oh okay, but, but, but it's about moral leadership, it's about New Zealand uh, showing the world. Uh, and the truth is, no it's not. Uh, what it's going to show the world uh, is that if you try to get too far ahead uh, in terms of taxing uh, and regulating emissions, what you'll actually do uh, is drive uh, jobs and industries uh, offshore to places that are even less committed uh, than we are uh, and so you'll do nothing for the environment and punish the New Zealand economy and people trying to have jobs, bring up their families and, and live a prosperous life. Uh, so I would say at the moment uh, what we're doing, whether or not it's sufficient, uh, it's just not very smart. In your opinion, is the ETS in its current form an equitable system that delivers sufficient economic signals to its emitters? What changes would you advocate to make it more effective, if any? Well, first of all, it's, it, it's, very, it's very complicated. Uh, it tends to target sectors. Uh, there's been a lot of political meddling. I think it was Helen Clark who decided to leave petrol out uh, because she didn't have what it took uh, to put the costs onto everyday families uh, and voters. Uh, and that's a problem wherever you go uh, in the world, uh, is that very few politicians have the political fortitude to put real costs onto large sectors of the society. Uh, you'll see uh, when the recession started, Angela Merkel said she didn't want to reduce uh, emissions if it meant risking one German job. Uh, at the same time, you saw uh, the Liberals in Canada uh, with their green shift tax plan uh, get humiliated uh, in the, I think it was the 2008 uh, election. Uh, and just recently, we've seen the, the National Party say, well, actually, we'll, we'll put the inclusion of biological emissions uh, in the ETS uh, back a few years. So there's always these difficulties uh, with designing schemes uh, which means that you, you get too many political concessions, and the ETS is, is, is a victim of that too. If you really uh, are serious about reducing carbon emissions, uh, then what you would have to do uh, is set a carbon tax uh, and put it on all carbon emissions right across the economy. Uh, but of course there's a huge cost to doing that, uh, and I'm not sure uh, that first of all it's the right thing to do, uh, and second of all uh, that it's a, a politically realistic thing to do at the moment. What are your opinions on the expansion of fossil fuel industries such as coal, 
and lignite mining and oil and gas extraction in New Zealand. Do you personally support a call for a 10-year monitorium on new coal and lignite developments? Uh, no, I don't, for the following very simple reason. Uh, we are kidding ourselves uh, if we think that we can change uh, the global uh, energy usage patterns uh, by deciding how much uh, we're going to mine here in New Zealand. Uh, all we would be doing uh, would be saying that we're going to have less extractive activity uh, in New Zealand uh, and uh, import more from overseas. If you're really serious uh, about changing behaviour then you have to start uh, at the consumption end, uh, bearing in mind that uh, again the changes we make to consumption in New Zealand are, are also very small but uh, you know it's not a moral victory to put these moratoriums, uh, it's actually a moratoria, sorry, it would be uh, a pirate victory uh, because all we'd do uh, is drive jobs and economic activity uh, offshore to people with worse uh, environmental records than New Zealand. What do you see as the main future sources of energy for electricity, transport and heating for New Zealand? Do you support the call for the government to create an action plan to attain 100% renewable energy before 2050? Uh, no, I don't, for the following reason. Uh, what is going to be the best way uh, to discover more efficient energy? And I'm, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm excited about a lot of the technological possibilities that are out there. Uh, but if I knew what the best technology uh, for our future, uh, with the lowest emissions, with the lowest costs, with the lowest uh, non-emission environmental impacts was going to be, uh, I would not be here running for parliament. I'd be investing in them, uh, inventing them and making a huge amount of money. Uh, so I do not believe uh, that governments are going to do any good uh, by trying to pick winners and have programs and strategies to identify uh, the best uh, future technology. Uh, you look at the Green Party's platform of spending a billion dollars uh, on clean energy. What they're saying is that some Green Party minister in the next government, if they get there, with very little commercial activity, is going to go into the venture capital market investing in futuristic energy uh, technology uh, up against companies like General Electric, Siemens in Germany, uh, Samsung in South Korea, uh, and somehow are going to make better choices with your taxpayer money uh, than the rest of the global economy uh, does it, it investing. Uh, it's just not credible. And wherever these large government schemes have been tried, take for example the Spanish experience uh, in green jobs, which is worth Googling, uh, basically what they managed to do was waste a huge amount of taxpayer money creating a very small number of jobs. Uh, you can take the corn ethanol debacle uh, where governments such as the United States started forcing people to use corn ethanol in a certain percentage of their petrol uh, and as a result huge tracts of land were used to grow corn to make ethanol uh, and the result was uh, First of all, it contributed to the massive world food shortages that we had uh, a few years ago. Uh, second of all, uh, it distorted the US economy and destroyed a lot of wealth and prosperity. Uh, and worst of all, uh, they discovered that by the time you take all the energy required uh, to grow corn ethanol, all the emissions related to that, uh, they actually didn't do much good for the environment anyway. In fact, some people would argue it was a negative. Uh, so I don't favour uh, governments taking large, grand plans, schemes and actions uh, to try to reduce emissions because uh, it, it actually ends up hurting more than it helps. Sorry, we just... Yo!